after? How do you plan on competing with, let's say, Davido, the Wiz kids, these young boys nowadays? Do you have? Do you plan to compete with them, or your your own lane? I just want to do music your own way. Well, uh, I don't compete with anybody. Mm. I'm just doing things my own way. And if you listen to my sound, it's different. I'm not competing with anybody. Okay, I just want to tell stories. I just want to do things my own way. No competition. I intend to have some collaborations with some of them if they want to. Um, so no competition at all because everybody gets their own destiny. Mm. They understand. So I just want things to flow. Why is my father being celebrated here, but not in Africa? Mm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. To the extent that I was in, I was in, in the UK and they were playing one of his songs, Hypertension. Mm -hmm. Hyper, hyper, hypertension. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the DJ, I was like, the DJ was like vibe. Everybody was like vibing to the song. People were holding themselves, hyper, <laughs> hyper, and they were all dancing, you know, and stuff. So I told the G DJ, uh, that's my father. He said, yeah, you wish, right? You wish you said that. <laughs> this guy, the funkiest guy I've ever seen in Africa. Also, um, to to have like a William Onyabu day in Enugu, a day we celebrate him, mm. okay? Because I think he is the fella of the, of the Eastern region. Mm. Mm. Yes. You think so? I know so. Okay. Okay. I, I, I like I know that. So. I like that. Because I... I I I I I see how he's being celebrated outside the country, even though we don't really appreciate him in Nigeria, which is normal. But he's been celebrated here. Hello, gracias a tutti mi fans. Mi seguite su Facebook, Instagram. Mi chiamo Charles Onyabor. Mi potete seguire su Instagram. E grazie a tutti che seguono mio babbo William Onyabor. E grazie mille. For 18 years. What year? Yeah, How, 18 years. Why? Why did you leave Nigeria? I know the answer. Well, I want the question, that... Hold on. The question answers itself. But I'd like to just hear you say it. I wanted to do music, actually. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That was the I main reason. Do... I, I just wanted something different. I wanted to do something on my own. Okay. You know? Yeah, because, you know, uh, being the son of uh, William Monyab wasn't really that easy because um, um, nobody ever believed we could do something on our own without our father's influence. He was um, rich and very, very famous. So I wanted something different on my own. That was why I left and I came to Italy. So I wasn't really planning on going to Italy, but when I came, I fell in love with the food. <laughs> and the clothes. I love I, I love I love good clothes. I love fashion. I, we can tell. We yeah. can tell. So, <laughs> so so to those who watch this interview after we're done with it, you need to go check out uh, some of Charles's videos. You see where he says he loves good clothes, you see there's evidence, plenty of evidence in those videos. Yes. And look at how he looks now. I so... love <laughs> yeah. So that was um um, initially, I wanted to do music when I got here, but it wasn't really easy for me as a black man. So, you know, it took a lot of time. Then um, I, I, you know, lost interest in music, you know, and I, I started to, I opened a company here and, and that was it. I forgot about music until my father died in 2017. So, um, during the pandemic, I was kind of, you know, we had this lockdown. Everybody, you know, sit at home, we're all at home and stuff. That was when I had, that was when I had time to reflect. You know, I started thinking about things I should have done, things I should be doing. I thought about my father's legacy and everything. So that was when I had this wake up call to to start doing something I love. Then I wrote, um, "They can't pull us down." Okay. And that song was inspired by, you know, the circumstances around me. People are, are trying to, to pull, pull me down. So uh, it was, and initially it was about me pulling me down before I had to generalize it because in one way or the other, we, we're always, somebody wants to pull us down one way or the other. Yes, yes. one way or the other, yeah. Yes, so that was when I had to write this song, arranged it, and 
much. I had to shoot the video in my own house, inside my compound. Yes. Okay. And I wanted it to be a one, you know, uh, one-time thing, but okay. see me here doing music. So, <laughs> but, okay, let the legacy grow and continue, father, uh, father's legacy. So that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, it's, it's almost like a story of you know destiny delayed, not denied at all. Yes, yes. Like, interesting. And I believe uh, God's time is the best. Some some people tell some of my friends be like, Ah, child, so you get this talent, you don't do anything all this while. I'll be yeah. like. Well, God wants me to do it now, okay? Because maybe if I had done it far back, maybe uh, I would have made money, I would have squandered it or something. So, but now I think I know what I want to do, what I'm doing. So, I, I agree. I agree. Because, like I said, it, it, coming from such a background and knowing, would you say, would you say that your father being who he is was was that where the influence to do music came from? Or you feel like it was inbuilt. You had always wanted to do music. Like I know you went to the to do to Italy for music, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But I, I just want to know about the influence. Like your what what? Why was it music? Why did you say okay? You know what? I want to play football. I want to go into business like my father or something. Why was it that that music was the cool? Okay, that was the money, I was think the wanted to do. I think it's something inbuilt because even right now, sincerely speaking. I'm still surprised that I could write songs. <laughs> like I never knew I could write songs okay. until I started trying to do it. So um, you hear voices in your head, ideas coming into your head. And my mom, okay, let, okay, let me just tell you a story about how I wrote my first song. Okay. My first song happened this way that um, I had, a, you know, I had this voice coach, Miriam Taylor. Yeah, I'm telling she, she was my voice coach. So she was like telling me how, you know, I, you know, I could start music and stuff like that. So I said, okay, but I don't know what to do, how to start. She said, okay, what kind of song would you like to do? I was like, um, anything funky, old school, blah, blah, blah. She was like, okay, I'll talk to a producer so they can make you a beat. So they made some beats and they sent it to me. So I, I had to choose one. The one I chose for the can't pull us down, my, my debut single. Okay. Now, I know Sabu and I go talk for that song, bro. <laughs> like, I don't know. So I had to send it to my younger brother mm -hmm. because he, he sings. Okay. Okay. But he's he's into gospel music. Mm -hmm. I sent it to him, I told him to write. So he was like, he's going to write me something, but it's going to be um gospel. I said, Dan, yes. write me anything, come out all the Jesus way down. All of them are still music, you know. So, like, then I said, Apras, you're not talking anything bad. Just, you know, why don't you talk about life or something? Mm -hmm. He was like, well, his inspiration comes with, you know, Bible, blah, blah. I said, okay. I waited for my brother for like three weeks. He didn't send me anything. <clears throat> so my mom, by then, was here with us okay. during that pandemic. So we're all at home. So I, I, I had to put the beat, and it was playing, and I was um, playing with my kids. Okay. So I started, I looked at my mom, and I was like, Tell me how you feel right now. Mm. The more you know, to let you see. My mother was like, hey, Jelly, write it down, write it down. I was like, write what down? What you just did, you went with the beat. Just do it like your father. Write it down immediately. <laughs> I was like, how? Jelly, write it down. That was when I had to write it down. Mm -hmm. And that was how it started. It's how it started. In, wow. less than, in less than 10 days, I was able to construct something. Mm. Then I went to the studio and I had to deliver. So when I came back home, I was like, I was kind of surprised. Like I could do this. Okay. Yeah. Then I had to listen to the song over and over again. Then I went back to, you know, for some amendments and everything. And I was like, okay, let me shoot a video. Yeah. We still had this lockdown. We couldn't do anything. Okay. So, um, I then found a way to shoot a video. I invited my friends for, for lunch yeah. and they came for lunch and they saw cameraman. They were like, a hey, guy, what's in the happen? Say, brother, I do need something. I want to do video. They were like, ah, you, you, you sing. No, 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 no. So when they heard the song, they were all surprised. And that was how I shot, shot the video and did that. I, I could tell there was a, there was a homely feeling in that particular video because, it, it, you know, 
you can tell when people are acting or you can tell when it's just a gathering of friends there's food and everybody's just you know relaxed yeah. and chilled and everything so I, I think you guys got that particular that vibe you got it you got it well so share this story now it was something inbuilt and um because normally if, Indian, yes. if thank god for your mom who was there probably you must have been doing this thing in the past maybe hearing beats and you just singing along to them creating them in your head but you might not have known that this is yes what yes saying. exactly 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 okay okay yes. okay, okay. Yeah. let's talk about this new song that you have out it, uh, the youtube description says uh, i think something about that everybody has access Everybody has exes. Bye yeah, before people. yeah, before before you move to your next, you have to say bye bye to bye your to ex. Your ex. Okay, so so it's a yeah. little bit, it's a little bit cheek on the nose. It's quite obvious. But talk to me about the song. First of all, it's titled "Bye Bye to My Ex Lover," right? Yeah. So so I'm I'm here. I, when I heard the song for the first time, I, I have to give you kudos for that. It, it became very. It was sing along. I could sing along very easy like bye bye to me. i just kept on singing you know, along to my was that something you were going for while you were crafting the song together yes um um you know i, I noticed that people want something simple something they can sing along with something yeah. very simple so while i was constructing this song um the song is really uh, it's based on a true life story so while i was constru- constructing this oh song, a true life story with the help of it yeah, true love story. Yeah, with the help of a friend, a very nice, talented guy, uh, Reginald. So we had to construct it, and it was all about something simple people could vibe with. Bye bye to my ex love. I try, but you messed up. You know, so very simple. You know, and so and luckily, uh, people they have been calling me, telling me, guy, that's your song. You gave my head. I said, yes, sir. I can't remember my ex. Get one big week. Get one big one player for the other one. See, get one guy, why one player for you know? Yeah, so, yeah. I, I so it is really working just the way, the way I wanted it. Yeah, so, so is that mm. a, is that a regular thing for you? Do you draw from experiences like your own experience or people's experiences? Does that drive the kind of music you make? Yeah, from my experiences, um, and maybe other people's experiences, yes. Oh, okay. Yes, because my last song "Do It Your Way" was from my own experience. Mm-hmm. Because um, I have tried to do so many things the way other people wanted me to do to do them, but okay. it never worked out well. So when I started doing things my own way, it started working well for me. So that, that was why I said, "Do it your way." Ah, okay. What works for you doesn't work for me. So that that was how I, that was how I had to construct that. One. Oh, okay. That that makes. And that I, makes... I made the chorus simple as well. Do it <laughs> okay. your way. Yeah. Do it your way. So, so when people see me now, they'll be like, "Hey, guy, do it your way." Be <laughs> laughing. Yeah, <laughs> that makes that makes yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Now, so let, let's talk about Nigerian music in general. First of all, how is the music industry in Italy? You know, Nigerian music is everywhere now. We have guys that are doing amazingly well for themselves, and more and more people are joining the bandwagon. More and more people are becoming musicians. You know, based on the success of these guys. But before I even ask you about those ones. Let, let, let's talk about from the, from a from a foreigner's point of view. Now I am a foreigner. You've been there for eighteen years. I, I'd like to think you are Italian as well. So so how is the music industry generally? Um, and uh, you know, getting into the music music industry because I know where you said you moved at the first time. That was eighteen years ago. You're not the same person you were then. You've learned a lot of things. So so generally, yes. talk to me. How is the music industry now? Yeah, that's our Nigerian music industry, right? If, yes, in Italy. I'm just talking about the music industry in Italy. Before we answer, well, what um, about Nigeria? Well, I have to say that uh, we don't really support ourselves here. That's the problem. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. We don't really support ourselves here. And that's it's really, really sad. And somehow, um, from my own investigations, even the ones in Nigeria don't really support you, especially when you are starting. Mm. They will only support you when they see you started doing it without them, and they will support you. Mm. Davido, for example, everybody used to call him Daddy's boy. Okay, he, he's, uh, he's the son of a billionaire, but that guy has really worked hard to of be course. where he is right now. All right, 
So now everybody was kind of criticizing him, saying all the blah, 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 until he started doing, like, doing things the way he's doing it now, and everybody joined, okay? So over here, we have so many talented Nigerians here, you know? Um, but you can't really get that kind of support from our people. You know, for example, um, when there's a kind of show and you tell some Nigerians here to come to a club and pay like 30 or 40 euros, they're not ready to do that. So most of them, I'm not saying that they're not, yeah. we don't have guys that can pay, but there's many, most of them that would prefer to spend that on just buying alcohol yeah. than paying it for going to that club. No, they're, they're not ready for that. Yeah. So, but we need to start supporting ourselves to do because here, even before I started now, huh? There's so many talented Nigerians here now. Many of them. Yeah. But you the know? problem, the problem is just the lack of support from fellow Africans or fellow Nigerians. Yes, we need yeah. Fellow fellow Nigerians. Fellow Nigerians. We need to support ourselves. So because Nigerians are very you yeah, know when I'm Nigerians sure. support you, yeah. when Niger Niger people support you, yeah. huh? Now just a <laughs> bit make noise now. It's like just watch watch on um on Instagram. Yeah. You know when somebody comes against a Nigerian celebrity uh -huh. and Nigerians they against that celebrity. <laughs> you know how all of them they pack good person. Uh, just to, if we report to Instagram, the person will be blocked. <laughs> just to tell uh, that kind of Nigerian they're very good at that. Now imagine when we use it positively, like everybody could be support mm. support us, like no matter how small, mm -hmm. even by sharing your, your music. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's really painful. It's really, really painful, but hopefully one day everything will change. Everything, everything will change. Because I'm looking at you now, you have 18 years. You've been away for 18 years. And now you're trying but I'm to... All, but I they come to Nigeria all the time. I know. I'm, but I'm saying officially. I'm saying officially as a musician. Okay, yeah. You understand? I know you still have your hands in a lot of things and you are, you are keeping out, you are keeping in touch with the music generally now. You understand? So the question I obviously I have to ask is that how do you plan on competing with Let's say David O, the Whiskeys, these young boys nowadays. Do you have? Do you plan to compete with them or your your own lane? I just want to do music your own way. Well, uh, I don't compete with anybody. Mm. I'm just doing things my own way. And if you listen to my sound, it's different. I'm not competing with anybody. Okay, I just want to tell stories. I just want to do things my own way. No competition. I intend to have some collaborations with some of them if they want to. Um, so no competition at all because everybody gets your own destiny. Mm. They understand. So I just want things to flow. You don't want it to be so, forced uh, at all. No, I don't want to force anything. Like I have, I have other things that I do. I'm a businessman as well. So okay. and uh, now I'm um, an upcoming artist. Okay. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when you say it about me. <laughs> 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 yeah, the thing is, uh, that's what now, upcoming artist now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, we hope that tomorrow will be better. Mm. Yeah, tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow. I just hope that people will listen to this new song, Bye Bye to My Ex Love, because I think everybody has an ex, mm. one or the other. Uh, okay. So, you just, uh, okay. it's, a, it's a cool song, actually. Okay. It's a cool song. I yeah. Agree. So how was growing up with a superstar as a dad? Yeah. Well, um <laughs> being the son of um a legend. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you won't even know what you have until you lose it. Mm. Uh I I think I started knowing I started to realize, you know, how blessed I was. I think when I went to, when I went to um, New York, that was 2014. Okay. I went to New York and I went. To, I was on holidays with my family. So, and somehow I met these these people, Lock Above. They are the ones oh, managing oh, our yeah, music. Yeah, 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 yeah. David Bryan and them. So, I, huh? David Bryan, now I think that's his name now. Yeah, David Bryan. Yeah, David yeah, Bryan, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, I met Yield and uh, Eric. Mm -hmm. So when they saw me, like you know, when they tried to 
they were treating me like a celebrity. Mm-hmm. Snapping pictures with me. Hello, yeah, I'm William Williamson right now. Yeah, I'm gonna call you that. You know, like, <laughs> all that. okay. Then they wanted to know about his music. They appreciated his music and so many things, you know. And they started showing me videos of some shows in um, in America, um, sold out shows in the UK, and you know some of his T-shirts being sold and everything. You know, so I was like, oh, wow. Why is my father being celebrated here, but not in Africa? Do you understand? Mm-hmm. To the extent that I was in, I was in, in the UK, and they were playing one of his songs, Hypertension, mm-hmm. Hyper, Hyper, Hypertension, yeah, 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 yeah. And the, the DJ, I, I was like, the DJ was like vibing, everybody was like vibing to the song. People were holding themselves, Hyper, <laughs> Hyper, and they were all dancing, you know, and stuff. <laughs> so I told the G, DJ, uh, that's my father. He said, Yeah, you wish, right? You wish you said that. <laughs> this guy is the funkiest guy I've ever seen in Africa. So when he, when he said I wish, I know one defend I know one talk more guys. Ah, look at your much shut up. Do you understand? So like they were celebrating him. Then when he died, BBC everywhere, you know, people said that they that uh, that they had their wedding with William Oyabo's song. Like people, so many testimonies here and there. And I was like, child, so I, I am part of this. And I didn't even realize how blessed I was. Mm. Then my friend called me from the UK and said, God, he saw some of my father's records, sold for 600 pounds. Mm. And he was telling the people that he knows uh, his son and they were doubting him. Then he had to call me on video to see the guys. And they go, hey, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> like that. So, and... There was this girl from Czech Republic, my friend, we've been friends for so many years, and she said, oh, Charles, listen, I want to tell you something really funny right now. I was like, okay. She said, I just uh, found out this guy, he's very talented, um, very funky, you know, nice song from the 70s, blah, blah, blah. I just added him on my playlist. But guess what? I said, what? He has your last name, like same last name, Unyabo. I was like, okay, what's his first name? William. So, okay, that's my dad. No, no, that's not your dad. <laughs> Do you understand? So, when I when I sent her a picture of me and my dad, she mm. turned red. <laughs> you know when you know when they, when they are like yes, when yes. they are emotional, they, they change. You know, their color changes. So then uh, he did a lot. Mm. You know, and yeah, while I was growing, I used to see him. The way he writes songs, the, the way he, he, he would be in the bathroom and he would just come out, rush outside with his towel and come and write down something that he would head back to the bathroom. <laughs> like, so then it's very, uh, I also realized that the more successful you are, the more people talk, mm. like negative talks. Because while I was growing, people were saying that. Um, Somebody came to his studio to, to record a song and he stole his song. Huh. That was when the going is smooth and good. Yes. But na- many Nigerians know who said the man has so many songs. They thought that was his only song. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah, they thought that was the only song. So now I released my debut single. They can't pull us down. The rumor everywhere is his father wrote that song for him and left it for him. That was how he was how? able to. That's what people yeah, are saying. No. Yeah, so just to tell you that when you are successful, when you are doing something, people must talk. <laughs> Do you understand? So yes. um, I feel blessed even when they talk. Because if, if you're nobody, nobody has time to talk about you. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's fine. So I saw the documentary as well about where they were trying to find your dad and everything about how they were trying to get to him and when they go to the house, he didn't want to, he didn't talk. <laughs> See, I, I was so invested in that documentary that it was like a movie. That from the beginning, how they were, so I was following the guys, the where they went to where his studio was and everything. They then yeah. went to the house, they then saw him. So those guys actually shot it very well because they, they get thought he was, he was not stationary. He was appearing in different parts. You know, those Nollywood film, when the actor, you would know who the actor is, I yeah. in the last moment. Then we then heard his voice when he was saying, thank you, everybody. Uh, he, he was yeah. just 
He was my, a lot. My, my, name, a lot. my name is William Onyabo. Exactly. Live a you good get, life. You get, you get, you get. That was that was really, really amazing. So they because said a lot. He, he, okay, he became yes. a born again Christian before, yes. yeah, for, for many years. You know, okay. He was, um, he, he started, you know, giving Bibles to people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he just became a born again. So he doesn't want to talk about his music anymore. He, should, he didn't want to talk about it anymore. And, and everything. I could I could feel the disappointment of the guys who made that documentary that they couldn't get him to actually you know sit down because what he was doing at that time was so far ahead of his time. Then, then apparently yes. there were rumors at that time that he went to Russia. Then he came back with a lot of these instruments and everything. Some people say he joined the mafia. He, that's why he didn't want to talk. He was just and I'm like. <laughs> I, I, so when, the, when, when the opportunity came to speak to you, I was like, no way, I have to ask you this question. But now you've said it that he, he was, he became a born again, a born again Christian. So there was nothing like mafia or any of those plenty drama they were seen at that time. Well, I won't say much about my father's past because uh, we have plans on shooting a movie about his life. Okay. So, um, because um, Lockerbot released an, an album title who is William Onyam. Who is yes, yes. So that question is that question is still there. Everybody wants to know William Onyam. So we are planning on shooting a movie and to, to tell the story and um also um to to have like a William Onyabu day in Enugu, a day we celebrate him. Mm. Okay. Because I think he is the fella of the of the Eastern region. Mm. Mm. Yes. You think so? I know so. Okay. Okay, I, I like I that. So. I like that because I, 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 I see how he's being celebrated outside the country, even though we don't really appreciate him in Nigeria, which is normal. But he's been celebrated here. Yes, you understand. Is. Even when I started, when I when I started my career, just a white guy. When I came into a bar, and one white guy told the other white guy, "Man, this guy is huge." And the other guy said, oh, his name is Charles. He's, he's a singer. I was like, ah, oh, OK. Hip hop? I said, no, not hip hop. Then he was like, OK, what kind of music? Then we went to YouTube and he saw my, he started listening to my, watching my uh, my video. Then he saw my last time. I said, Onyabo, bro. My my perikazi said, he can't show William Onyabo. He was speaking in Italian. If I knew William Onyabo, I said, yeah, that's my dad. <gasps> oh, my dear. To a party, William Munya, but don't you both agree? He was like, the father of William Munya, I can't believe this, you know. Then that was when he was like, Can I have your number? I have this contact, they're, they're gonna like to hear um, your music so they, they can, you know, play your music. That was how my music started growing here. That last name, Munya, mm. that was how everything started. Then all you know, the media, I had more than 40 interviews then from so many radio stations. And so on and so forth. So I know he's he's a legend, mm. and so many of us have I've come across so many um, Nigerian musicians. They really appreciate him, but they don't even know how to to um, to show that appreciation. Yeah. So I, I saw on Spotify the other day. They uh, he, um, Spotify. They were like they had to put pictures of. Nigerian legends that really influenced our music, and my father was there. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, yeah, I saw him there. So I, I plan on having a William Onyabu Day in Enugu that will invite so many big people and big, small, everybody who come and celebrate him. I'll be there performing his music with my with my younger brother. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be fun. Yes, yes, we, 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 really, we really look forward. We look forward to that and everything. I'm just glad that you just told us how the name, the Onyabu name, from your dad. Has opened more doors for you, even though he's passed. But he's I, see, nobody can deny the fact that, that that's the legacy. Exactly. Strong legacy. Nobody can deny the fact that he was. Nobody elected, can deny that. And uh, his his legacy still continues. You understand? And I, I intend doing that for my own children. For your own children as well. I like yes. that. I, li- I like. To build that. that kind of legacy for them, because if if a dead man could be able to build this kind of strong legacy, mm-hmm. man. Huh. 
that person strong will strong will <laughs> which is something money money can never money, buy now. yes yes i agree money can I buy. Agree. allora grazie a tutti i miei fans uh, mi seguite su facebook e instagram uh, mi chiamo charles ognabor mi potete seguire su instagram e grazie a tutti che seguono il mio babbo william ognabor e grazie mille no i said it my, i said it my own way like i was like Thank you. Um, thanks to all my fans, and um, um, they should follow me on my on my Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Uh, my name is Charles Ngabo, and you know that's it.